You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, this is Ink Dependence. I am Mike, and this is an ink from the Birmingham Pen Company. You have seen inks from the Birmingham Pen Company here on the channel before. In fact, they have one of my very favorite blues, which is the uh, Cathedral of Learning Panther Blue. Or should I say they had one of my favorite blues. They, uh, not too long ago, a few months ago, I guess, took down all of their inks because they were getting inks from somewhere else. They were importing, like, I guess, ink colors and then mixing them together to make their brand or make their, their bottles of ink. And they decided not to do that anymore. And so they went full from scratch. And so these are the new full from scratch ones. I contacted them and said, hey, I'm going to get some of these. Can you tell me which ones uh, are the same? They said, we'll send you three. So they did. Uh, I got Birmingham Pinco Electron, Fountain Turquoise, and Boiler Steam. Uh, all the labels on the top I made with my label maker. They don't label the boxes. And since I've got a bunch of these, I needed to, I needed to know. Okay, so here's what's in here. You have this little 30 mil glass bottle. They also sell them in 90 and, or sorry, 60 and 120 mil bottles as well. But the uh, the 30 mil bottle is nine bucks, and I think that is a very very competitive price and a dig it. I think these are good bottles. I've got no problems with them. The, the mouth might be a little bit like if you have a monster of a pen, maybe you have some problem getting in there. But I haven't, so I can't really uh, I can't really speak to that. Okay, so uh, and you can see there's uh, some nice like. You can see there's some sheen on the inside of that cap there, I think, right? Interesting. All right, because this is not a particularly sheeny ink, I wouldn't say. Uh, and I didn't have any little shards of bullshit come off of my hands, so everything's cool. <laughs> everything's cool. One of the things I like about these is I like these sort of craft papery labels that they put on them. Uh, writing ink, Electron, 30 mil, manufactured and bottled by hand in Birmingham Pin Company at in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and uh, then they have a little story about the uh, about the name. So this is the Shipping Port Atomic Power Station, the world's first peacetime use atomic power plant. Shipping Port Atomic Power Station opened in uh, 20 minutes north of Pittsburgh in 1957. Its reactor core was recommissioned from a nuclear aircraft carrier and powered by highly enriched uranium. So cool, I like that. It's a good story. Let's check out this ink. There it is. So you can see this is a very nice looking ink. Uh, it's a bright blue. You know. I like a bright blue. There's no, <laughs> there's no surprise about that. I think this is actually very nice. Now, um, I have tried this out in three pens because uh, I wasn't super happy with what I was getting first. So this is the first pen I had it in, which is a Pilot Custom Heritage 92. This is a piston fill pen. It has a medium nib, uh, but it is a very wet medium nib. I found these Pilot mediums on the uh, the 92 and the 74. Uh, at least those two, to be pretty wet. And uh, this one's not an exception. This is a pretty wet nib. And it was giving me some, like, feathering and bleeding behavior that I didn't love. Uh, and so I decided to try it out in this pen, which is a Platinum Procyon. Uh, so this is a cool pen. If you haven't tried one of these, definitely worth trying out. Uh, and this has a fine nib, and it is a very fine nib. In fact, if I got one of these, I would get a medium, and it would probably be more uh, more usable for me in general. Although sometimes you just need a real fine nib, and this really fits the bill. Uh, it's also a little bit on the dry side, and so you can see there's a massive difference between... Uh, these two writing samples, the, the medium and the fine, like they're hugely different. And then thirdly, a pen that I don't actually have in my possession anymore, I reviewed this a little while ago, the Esterbrook JR, and this has a number five Yovo fine nib on it, which is a nib that I am very familiar with, I have plenty of those, and um, I think it worked out pretty okay in that nib. Um, the deal with this, uh, this, this, this ink is that it's a little bit on the, the wet side, and it's also on the bleedy side. So you need a fine nib, but you see if you put a fine nib in it, you lose out on a lot of the like real color depth here. And usually I use Rhodia for these reviews because it's pretty impervious. But uh, if you look at the back here, um, it bled through here, and in fact it bled through onto the next page, which is actually the last pla the last page. I finished I finished this notepad of this is all reviews, uh, and it also it bled in some of the text, which is very unusual. It bled down here, uh, and so that's that's not great behavior, and so that's why I was putting it in the very fine nib. Then not being entirely happy with it. I mean, it's still a nice blue, but you lose a lot of the great character of this ink when you put it in a super fine nib like that one. So, uh, this one a little bit bleedy on Rhodia. How did it do on 20 pound recycled copy paper? 30% recycled copy paper? I mean, not great. Predictably poorly. Everything is kind of bleedy on this paper, but uh, here from this medium nib, like, 
you can see letters were moving together. You've got so much spread and you've got some uh, feathering obviously in here. You get a little bit of that with the, the, the fine nib, but way less. It actually works pretty well with this fine nib on this paper. And you flip it over and yeah, lots of bleed through. Not so much here on the fine nib, just a few dots here and there, which is actually pretty good. And then here with the, uh, this is the Yovo fine from the Estherbrook JR. Uh, it's okay, it, it's not super bleedy. You get a few points here and there, but again, this is bad paper. Uh, but you do still get some feathering and that sort of thing. So if you're using the JR, I think, uh, here it is. Uh, that's, I had to use another page because I was like, nah, I don't know, let's, uh, I, I ran out of room. Uh, I didn't really have any problems with the JR on the Rodeo or anything. So I think if you keep this ink in finer nibs, maybe not ultra fine, but uh, like a fine nib, I think you'll probably be okay with it. And I think the color looks a lot better. So um, I, I put it in here. Flow is still great, still getting feathers and bleeds. Uh, and yeah, it's not an ink I'm going to use much, which is too bad because it's a cool color. So I am hoping that these two aren't the same way because, you know, inks vary based on dyes and all kinds of things. And also maybe they'll dial us in over time. It's entirely possible that's what's going to happen. Okay, so there's uh, the pens I've been using, the quality qualities. There's a little bit of sheen. <laughs> like, it's so little though. Like, I'm not actually seeing much of it here. Am I going to see much of it on here? Yeah, a little bit on here. Just a skosh on this coloring card. But yeah, not very sheeny, pretty saturated, and that's pretty much what you're gonna get from it. Okay, so if you're looking for a wet ni uh, a wet pen, goodness, a wet ink to put in a, uh, a pen with a fairly fine nib and use on good paper, this is gonna be a perfectly good ink for you, and this is a very nice color of blue. Okay, so let's do the water test real quick, uh, look at the chromatography, and uh, you know, look at it on a couple of other papers, and then some like, you know, color samples. Okay, let's put some ink, uh, ink, goodness. Put some water on here. Splorch. A little shake and a shimmy. Oh, looks like it's doing okay. Not amazing, but pretty okay. All right, let's mop this up. I'm not sure what to expect. That actually did kind of okay. I'm surprised. <laughs> now it did, uh, the water did push that ink back through the page. Uh, and you actually got a little bit down here. That's a, uh, it's a bit of bleed through from the other page that wasn't there before, I don't think. So uh, the water did uh, did push the ink through the page and it made it feather some more. Didn't didn't do great. Maybe keep this one away from water. If this is a, an ink that you're looking for waterproofness from, I don't really know what to tell you. It didn't really, like, it's still totally legible, but it did make the performance worse, so that's too bad. Okay, let's look at a, uh, here is the, the chromatography for this ink, which I think is kind of cool. But also, you can see why I was not expecting anything in terms of water resistance. Here we go. <laughs> I was dropping my, my board here. Um, because it started down here, and there's just nothing there. It got pushed entirely up the page, which is interesting because it stayed on the page here on the Rhodia, uh, and it just kind of got pushed through the page, which I guess I shouldn't be terribly surprised about. It's going to be pushed around by water for sure, but uh, yeah, a lot more of it stuck on the page than it did on the chromatography uh, strip. Pretty cool. Okay, let's look at this on some other papers. Uh, here I have it in my ink journal. This is a Tomoe River ink journal, and uh, let's see, where is it? Right, here is one of them. This is the Esterbrook JR. And I think it actually looks really nice on this Tomoe River, and I didn't have any problems with it bleeding through. So if you're gonna be using Tomoe River, I think pretty, pretty good there. Here it is in the Platinum Procyon. I think it's less interesting, um, of course, from the very fine nib on that Procyon. And then here it is from the uh, Custom Heritage 92 with that really uh, wet medium nib. I think that looks actually really good. You get way more sheen and that sort of thing on this paper than you did on Rodeo or on the color, uh, Colodex card. Uh, and no bleed through, although you can definitely see it, but this is Tony River, it's incredibly thin. So if you're using it on good paper, this is good stuff. All right. Here's my wheat straw paper. This is my currently inked Inky Fingers notebook. Uh, a couple of people sent me some extra Inky Fingers notebooks, so thank you so much for doing that. That is so nice. And now I am set for a while with Inky Fingers notebooks. Now, where the heck did I put the... Where'd it go? My bookmark is not in the right place. Here we go. Here's two of them. Uh, this is, of course, the Pilot Custom Heritage 92 with that medium nib. And did it bleed through on here? Uh, there's a couple of spots, maybe, but nothing serious. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it at all. So this is that new formula here. 
and uh, I think it looks pretty good here. It doesn't look great from the uh, from the Procyon, if you're if you're asking me. But I like my inks pretty saturated. This is probably a perfectly good bright uh, blue for a lot of you, uh, especially if you like undersaturated inks. Now, where did I put the uh, the Junior or the JR? Did I put it in here? Uh, nope, didn't use that one. Interesting. So there we go. We only have two uh, two of those samples. Okay, so let's look at it next to a bunch of other colors. Uh, so here we go. This is uh, this is my favorite blue uh, from them, and I'm gonna be, I guess, hoarding this <laughs> this ink now. Um, it's a little bit more on the purpley side, which I kind of hadn't expected, but it's a darker blue. This is the Cathedral of Learning Panther blue, uh, which you can't really get anymore, unfortunately. But uh, this one is a gorgeous one. If you ever find a bottle of this, snap it up or tell me and I'll snap it up. Uh, then we have uh, Robert Oster's Blue Water Ice, which I think is actually kind of close. Uh, it has more sheen, of course, than uh, the Electron does, but uh, it does have similar colors going on there for sure. And uh, Blue Water Ice is one of those inks that I keep forgetting how much I like, and then I put it in a pen, and I'm like, yeah, good. Uh, here we go, Birmingham Pin Company Winter Garden Snowflake. Again, this is one of their retired colors. Pretty close, I think, to the uh, the Electron. A bit on the lighter side, for sure. You can see that here in the, the title bits. Then, uh, let's see, Irishizuku Kanpeki, which I know a lot of people love, and actually I like this ink too. Uh, I'm not a huge Irishizuku fan, but this one is pretty cool. Uh, pretty close. I think Electron is a bit darker uh, than Kanpeki, but Kanpeki definitely behaves a bit better, so there you go. Uh, then we have, uh, oh, oops, goodness. Papier Plume's Peacock Blue, which is a very nice color. I like Peacock Blue a lot. It's a little bit more on the turquoise side than the uh, Electron is, but... Nonetheless, very nice blue. Then, uh, Monteverde Horizon Blue, which is an excellent blue. Uh, one that I tried out and then bought a, bot a bigger bottle of because I dig this ink. Uh, which is definitely a little bit more on the purpley side. It's closer, I think, to um, uh, Panther Blue, but you know, a little bit less uh, saturated. So Horizon Blue is a good one. And then lastly, because this one, woo, this one always blows me away and I still don't have a bottle of it. This is Colorverse Supernova which uh, has a whole bunch of sheen going on in there. Uh, I actually haven't, I haven't, I haven't used it yet. I got to find my sample. My friend Sandra gave me that one. Uh, and I got to find my sample and use that because that is gorgeous. Uh, and I think the blues are actually fairly close. You just have more sheen in the supernova. Okay, so there you go. This has been uh, Birmingham Pim Company's Electron, which I can't fully endorse, but if you're going to use it on good paper, uh, keep it on that good stuff, and uh, especially like the Tomoe River and those kinds of things, and it'll be totally fine. Uh, but keep it off of your copy papers. You're not going to have a good time if you put it on copy paper. So there you go. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.